what's up guys learning with rich here in this video after we work some options on our analytical model on our last video for this one we are going to explore more about the heating and cooling loads so we are going to analyze heating and cooling loads using this uh, feature for Revit 2021 all right so in this exercise we're going to specify the project settings that might affect the heating and cooling and you perform a heating and cooling loads analysis and then the report that is the result of this analysis will allow you to determine the heating and cooling uh, demands of the building okay so in this exercise uh, currently we are on level two space plan so now let's explore some options that we can use to specify the project settings now to specify project settings you can go to the manage and then here you can check out the project information just click that one so let's say for example you want to specify the building type of this uh, model that we have so let's say for our design so this will gonna be a school or university so for you to be able to properly uh, do that so from the project information you can go to the energy settings just click the edit here by the way you can put the details of your project here like the date status client name address name number that you can use to make it appear to your title block then you can also put some identity data here well anyway I'll just click the energy settings edit here and then after that um, from the advanced so there's the other options so just click edit and then from here you'll be able to change now the building type so this is one way of changing the building type so you can click that click the drop down arrow and then you look for the type so it's a school or university just select that one okay and then after that just select okay now so let's say for example you want to oh by the way you can also explore other options here that you might uh, that you want to change to further enhance your design okay so I'm just gonna select here okay and then I'll just select here okay now let's say for example um, you want to specify the the location of your project okay so to do that what you can do is you can go to the analyze tab and then you go to the heating and cooling loads just select that one okay and then uh, you'll be able to change it from the general tab so we have used this uh, dialog box last video so let us uh, use this again so as you can see there is the location here so there is the default location so by the way there is the building type there is the location so you can click that ellipsis button and then you will now have this location weather and uh, location weather inside dialog box up here so here you can specify the address and then you can search it you can use the internet mapping service or you can just select default city list from here okay just select from the city list specify the latitude longitude other designs that you that you have and then you just select okay well what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select internet mapping service so I'll just close this one so internet mapping service is best for energy analysis because it uses the internet connection so it's like a real time okay so I'll just use the default settings here Manchester NH and then you can pick here the use daylight savings time so when the location is in an area that observes daylight savings time so these options or this option adjust the time uh, automatically and then you can also explore the weather tab here okay and then you can specify uh, these uh, values or by default these values you can use that and then um, verify that the use closest weather station or use HVAC design data for from weather station you can uh, just tick that one and then after that just select OK now another thing that you can consider here on the general tab is of course your let's say the building service okay so what is the building service that you will be using so the default here is water loop heat pump okay and then on our 
uh, what else the building envelope so you can click the drop down arrow okay building service schematic types okay so we'll be uh, modifying this later on okay so what I'm gonna do is um, oh by the way for the let's say the sleeper space uh, tolerance so I'll just use the default one foot here and then I'll just select save settings okay so later if you want to still modify that so you just need to go back again to the heating and cooling loads uh, button which is this one now the next thing that you might consider on your design is you can verify the area and volume setting okay you can go to the architecture tab and then you can check out the room and area panel here just click that and then there is this uh, uh, tool here area and volume computations so you can click that the area and volume computations and then so under the volume computation so I'll just select areas and volumes or it's already the selected uh, button anyway so the areas and volumes option must be selected in order to perform an accurate heating and cooling loads analysis if after opening the heating and cooling loads tool you receive a message that the areas and volume option is not checked and that the space volumes will be approximate so you need to select this option okay so it's already selected so I'll just select okay okay so let's say for example I'm gonna zoom into this part here of my library so I'm gonna select the space so this is another uh, thing that you can consider just select the space that you want and then after that from the instance properties okay um you can specify here you can move the slider down so you can specify if that particular space will going to be occupiable or if it is just a uh, plenum okay so of course that will going to be occupiable okay and then for the condition type it will going to be heated and cooled so this is the parameter that determines whether a space is included in the heating load, a cooling load, both or neither. And then you can also specify here the space type, which is what we did last time as well. So you can click that um, ellipsis button. And then from here, so since this space is a library, so what I'm going to do is, of course, I'm going to look for library here. So I select the library, this one. So library, uh, audio, visual, library, audio, visual. Okay. So that will going to be appropriate. So I just select here. Okay. Again, this is the default standard uh, uh, values for that particular space type. So just select okay. I'm just doing that on one space, but of course, on your own design, so you need to do that on all the spaces that you have created to have an accurate heating and cooling loads analysis. Now, um, you can also specify here the number of people, so you can click that edit. Okay, and then you can click the drop down arrow, I can select here specified. So let's say I want that to be area per person so I click that one and then I'll just change this let's say to 50 okay and also for the heat gain per person so I'm gonna specify my own one so let's say I select specified here for the sensible I'll just use uh, about mm, 200 okay and then for the latent heat so I'll just make it uh, let's say 150 and then I'll just select OK. Okay. And also you can specify the electrical loads here. You can click edit again. And then under lighting, okay, you can select here, um, let's say the actual. So I select actual. So that's the actual lighting. And then for the power, so I'm going to select actual as well okay so actual okay and then i'm just going to select okay and that's it now going back again to my analyze tab the heating and cooling loads oh, let me just cancel this one 
Okay, so let us further modify this. So we already changed here the building type. We already changed the location to Manchester. And then for the uh, building service is water loop heat pump. Okay, and also for the, what else? Uh, schematic type. So how about I click that one, click the ellipsis button. Okay, so it will gonna open the schematic type here, the construction types. Okay, so the heating and cooling loads dialog contains building information that only affects the heating and cooling loads analysis. This is very important to notice. So Revit MEP stores this information as uh, project information. All right, so you can modify that construction type. So what else? So you can also go to the details tab. So you click that one, the details tab. And then if a warning displays for any space in the building, it should be corrected before you calculate the loads. Okay, so remember that. Okay, so you can select the space associated with the warning and then you can click this icon hint here to learn the costs for the warning. So if you have made changes to settings in the heating and cooling loads dialog, you can click OK to save your changes and close the dialog. So you should correct the space error in the building model and then you reopen the heating and cooling loads dialog to begin the calculations and there should be no warnings display so in our case as you can see there's no warning okay so let's say for example under the zone middle library this one so this is the zone again if you want to see that here on your analytical model you can click the highlight and then it will now highlight that particular area here right okay so, so as you can see here below, the information for the for the zone that you have that we just uh, selected, like for example, this is a zone of the zone properties of your middle library. So that's the service type. So I'm gonna expand this one, and then I select two one nine library. Okay, so as you can see, it's now showing here the space type. So the information for the space that we have entered in the element property dialog displays and you can modify it here. Okay, and let's say for example, um, on our heating uh, zone information, this one, so I select the zone here. And then there's the heating information. So I can click that ellipsis button. And then from here, you can modify the heating set point of that zone and then the heat uh, air temperature. So I'm just showing you some options that you can use to uh, further uh, add details to your zone settings and to your space settings as well. Okay. Now, the, so the next thing that we are going to do, so let's say, for example, you have done all of this. So let us try to uh, perform a, a heating and cooling loads analysis. So I'm just going to uh, select here, calculate. It will take a lot of time, but you just need to wait. So I click calculate. And while it is computing, so various factors such as the analytical and inner volumes of the spaces are analyzed as Revit MEP perform this heating and cooling loads analysis okay of course for more detail you can just press f1 to open the help button and then you can just check out there the integrated heating and cooling loads analysis tool and its calculation method okay so after the heating and cooling loads analysis is completed so the heating and cooling loads dialog Hopefully, it will close and a loads report display. So as you can see, it's still processing. So what we are going to do is um, we're going to check out that particular report. So we're going to review the loads report for the project, the weather space, and zone information for the building. So you must perform a new heating and cooling loads analysis each time you modify the building, the space, or zone information or make any changes to the model so otherwise the loads report or schedules uh, will not reflect to your changes so that's how you do it
Okay, so I think it's almost done. There you go. So like what I have said, so the dialog box will gonna be closed and then this is now your uh, report. Okay. So after you review the loads report, so you can rezone the model as necessary to optimize equipment usage in the building. So one tip, you can find all the generated loads report on our uh, project browser. Okay. So I think it's just under documentation. Yeah, okay, so this is the problem. Uh, let me just find it. So let me just uh, expand all. And then we should be able to see that report. Okay, so it should be here on our project price. So there you go. So as you can see, I've got a lot of reports here. Okay. So let's say, for example, here on our uh, loads uh, report, so under the zone summary for, let's look for uh, two middle libraries. So let's look for that. So two middle library. Okay. Lab space, lab. Okay, so this is the one. So there's the zone summary for two middle library. So you can just uh, check out this one. This is just an example. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, um, by the way, you can also click some of the ellipsis button here. Or I mean the, the hyperlink. So like, for example, for the 219 library, so you can click that. And then you will be going to that particular uh, space summary for that uh, 219 library. And then you can also click back to summary library, just like that. So you can click from here one by one. Okay, so after you, uh, you review the loads report, you can rezone the model as uh, necessary to optimize equipment usage uh, in the building. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, um, let's say I'm going to open the level 2 space again. So level 2 space plan, so I'm going to open that. And then here on my 219 library, I'm going to select that space. Okay, and then as you can see, there are already some uh, values here. There are some calculated values for the electrical loads. And then there's also the mechanical flow here. So you will notice the calculated supply airflow. Okay. And then some of the actual supply airflow here. Okay. So basically, in this exercise, we have learned how to perform a heating and cooling loads analysis on our building and view the loads report, okay? So hopefully, if you're going to use the Revit MEP or Revit 2021 for a heating and cooling loads analysis, hopefully this video has been helpful to you guys. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can put it on the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.